Today let's play a very fun game. Let's rank and rate all the cashback credit cards from Citibank. So the rules are very simple. They are ranks of S, A, B, C, D. So if you have played arcade games, you will know that S tier is like the highest tier. It's super value, must get. Okay, S stands for super value. And then for D is don't get, don't buy, don't waste time. Okay, the lowest tier. Okay, that you should not even waste time considering. So from S to D tier, uh, let's get that clear. Let's start with the most popular cashback card from City. That is the City Cashback Plus, which gives you unlimited 1.6% cashback. Now this City Cashback Plus card is really very easy to use for beginners because it's easy to understand, right? Just spend on anything as long as it's not excluded, you'll get 1.6% into your City credit card. And I believe most of you who have just stepped into the corporate world getting your first credit card, your City Cashback Plus is a very good entry card for you to go and apply for. And you can even get like $300, $350 cash if you sign up with my link with Sing Saver because that's how you'll start to do your credit card churning journey. But you see, that's not the point. The point is, is that CT Cashback Plus is a master card and you know that with a master card, you can actually link it to Instagram Amaze. Because if you haven't heard of Instagram Amaze, it's an amazing card that allows you to link up to 5 master cards and at the same time convert all your transactions into online spending firstly and secondly it can also help you save on fx fees when you deal in foreign currency purchases so instagram amaze card is my go-to card if you want to go for foreign currency purchases and especially if you want to convert all kinds of spend into online spend but we'll talk more about that later now the thing is that city cashback plus being an unlimited credit card that also means that you can use it for overseas big ticket items right especially if you want to buy a luxury handbag most of the credit cards usually kept you at a around 1000 Singapore dollars equivalent if you want to talk about cashback or maybe even lower but you see with the city cashback plus you can link it to Instagram Amaze at the same time save on foreign currency fees and get the maximum cashback that you could above those very low cashback caps now what's more is that city recently launched their city plus account which you can also spend it with your city cashback plus and with minimum $500 of spending it will bump up your cashback rate from 1.6% to 2%. But the bad thing about City Cashback Plus is that it excludes very useful cases like education payments, your prepaid wallet top-ups like GrabPay wallet, and even your most common bus and MRT simply go rides are excluded from City Cashback Plus. So there are some exclusions that you have to note if you're using this card. And also the fact that the cashback redemption is quite manual. You actually do have to send an SMS in order for you to redeem your cashback manually. And to me, that's quite a troublesome move because cashback from other credit cards are automatically credited into your account. Now that City Cashback Plus, you need to redeem in like blocks of $10 or something like that, which is quite inconvenient. So all in all, I'll give City Cashback Plus a B rating because it does not make it into A rating. It's not like highly recommended, but it's good for what it has, right? And it's a good entry beginner card. So B rating it is. Okay, let's move on to the next cashback credit card, which is the City Cashback Credit Card. Now this card gives you 6 to 8% cashback on three categories, 6% on dining, 8% on grocery, and 8% on petrol. Good thing about this high cashback credit card is that there are no subcategories. Unlike other credit cards where they cap your cashback to like $20, for example, for dining, $20 for online, $20 for grocery, this kind of thing, right? City Cashback does not have this nonsense, which is good, right? Because it's like, in one month, maybe you spend like more than $800 on grocery alone. Okay, maybe you go to fair price extra to buy a washing machine. Okay, that's more than $800. Then you can get the full cashback as long as it's within the cap of $80 per month. Well, the bad thing about this card is that it has a relatively high minimum spend of $800. So for those people who don't spend $800 a month, I think the only best way to do this is to front load your expenses. For example, like grocery vouchers, you can go and front load by NTUC gift cards or vouchers, go and pay them using your City Cashback card so that you can hit the minimum $800 spending. And because City Cashback only have three specific categories, which is dining, grocery, and petrol, there are not much use cases outside of these three categories for example you want to do online shopping you want to do travel all these are not eligible for cashback but one more good thing is that city cashback is a master card so you can link it to amaze as well so for example you want to go overseas like a malaysia road trip you want to top up petrol go and dine at their restaurants or buy groceries city cashback with the instagram amaze will be the best option for that so i will give city cashback an a rating because i felt that the high cashback is justified 
right? The minimum spend, although it's relatively high, it can be easily reached with front-loaded spending, especially in grocery gift cards. And the fact that it can be linked to Instagram or Maze as a Mastercard, I think that's really good. So give it an A tier. Or maybe you think 6 to 8% is too inconvenient for you. Like you need to track the spending, how much minimum spending, right? Then why not consider some gifts from my sponsor? I know your pain learning about investing because when you try to read about market news, company news, it's all scattered around the internet and information is so difficult to find. And the most annoying thing is sometimes when you click on an article, it is locked behind a paid subscription or a paywall. Now with Momo Singapore, you can get everything, every news consolidated for free and it's all convenient under one app. For example, if I click into Tesla and look at the financials, I can take a look at the revenue the indicators, the estimates, and the financial statements. Even interesting information like a pie chart for revenue and also important business data like total vehicle deliveries and deliveries by model types. The good news now is that Momo is celebrating their 10th anniversary year and they are giving you additional $10 cash bonus when you deposit any amount into Momo. So Momo is indeed a great platform to trade stocks with many unique easy to use tools within the app itself. So check out my link down below in the description and pin comment to sign up for Mumu today. Okay, next card is the City SMRT card. Now, this is a Visa card, uh, so no more a maze kind of linkage thing anymore. But this card will give you 5% in grocery spending, 5% in online spending, and 5% on your public transportation rides like bus, MRT, or even taxi and grab rides. And these are quite widely used categories within our daily lifestyle, right? Grocery, online spending, eh? Now you can spend on online spending and get 5% cashback. And even like your public transportation for those who don't drive. I mean, it's called the SMRT credit card so it must have very good benefits for public transportation ma. well the bad thing is that online spending does not give you the five percent online cashback because i think city is relatively negative to travel spending they don't like to award travel spending one so travel spending will include your spending at hotels fs railways cruise lines rental cars and even travel agents like your cloak your trip.com all that stuff right all these are excluded from city smrt five percent cashback now the really good thing about city smrt is that there is no monthly cashback cap which means that there is only an annual cap of 600 smrt dollars that you can earn within a card anniversary date and if you average out 600 dollars over 12 months that means like $50 cashback per month which will equate to $1,000 worth of spending at a 5% cashback level and without the money cap it means that maybe this month you can go above $1,000. Let's say if you have to pay for a very expensive online shopping transaction, maybe you want to buy an iPhone costing like $2,000, you can use your City SMRT card to go online to the Apple store and pay the $2,000 and get 5% cashback because there's no monthly cap, you see. So you get 5% cashback on $2,000, that's like $100 really. So it's really good for big ticket items, especially online for e-commerce or you have online furniture stores, online electronic appliances or home furniture furnishing stuff that you want to buy for your home, I think City SMRT has a very good use case for that. But of course, there's a minimum spend, right? You have to spend a minimum of $500 per statement month in order for you to earn that 5% cashback. So for low spenders who don't spend like at least $500 a month, City SMRT card is not a good card for you. But otherwise, I felt that City SMRT has a lot of use cases and 500 is relatively low for minimum spend card. Because don't forget that 5% applies to grocery spending as well, which means that you can front load your expenses via gift cards or vouchers. So I will give City SMRT an S tier, that is the top tier. Recommend the card for everyone to go and apply for. Okay, last cashback credit card from City is the City M1 card. And I bet some of you have never even heard of this card before. Now, I remember I was first introduced to this card when I went to an M1 shop to like sign a contract or something with my M1 plan. But you see, there is a credit card promoter down there telling me how good is this M1 credit card. And the headline there is like, 10% cashback on M1 bills. I'm saying, whoa, 10% ah, uh, so good or not? Then I read the terms and conditions, then I fainted. <laughs> okay, so this City M1 card will give you 10% cashback, up to 10% cashback, if you spend a minimum of $600 a month. Okay, $600 a month sounds okay, right? Especially if you have like a really large telco bill, you pay for a few families, maybe 600 is still a lot, uh, but it's not unreasonable since you get 10% cashback. But the next terms and conditions is the most stupid one. Because you see, there's only a cap of $300 on M1 recovering bills that can earn 10% cashback. Which means that 
the next three hundred dollars must be on non M1 recurring bills. Okay, you know what that means. It means three hundred dollars M1 recurring bills, three hundred dollars non M1 spend, and this non M1 spend will not earn any cashback. So essentially, your cashback is divided by half. Because three hundred dollars, half of six hundred dollars, is not counted for cashback. What? So the ten percent rate don't stand. You only get five percent effectively. And if you're getting five percent cashback only on City M1 bills, there's so many cards out there giving you five percent cashback, and you can spend it on any other thing, and you don't have six hundred dollars minimum spend. So this card is damn useless, lah. I don't even want to talk about it. D tier, D tier, no explanation needed. So yes, these are my rankings and ratings for the four cashback credit cards from Citibank. What other banks' credit cards do you want me to do a rating on? Do give some suggestions in my Telegram group at Honey Money SG as well. And if you want to look at what are the highest cashback credit cards from various banks that can give you A tier level of cashback, right? Then refer to this video right here because I compiled some of the highest cashback credit cards within the Singapore market.